new paper has just been released about Venus, and scientists think that in order to find life around the universe, we should first take a look at Venus. Everybody, Much Adventure here. Welcome back. Um, today, we're going to talk about this. We're going to talk about Venus. We're going to talk about why uh, these scientists think that we should be going to Venus in order to um, study kind of life everywhere else. And then also, we're going to talk about uh, these two different NASA missions that they're sending over to Venus. So let's get into it. One of the main things and really cool things that this paper talks about is we all know kind of how Venus and Earth are so similar with radius, with mass. Um, the difference is Venus is obviously a lot closer to the sun and also there's a moon on Earth, which Venus doesn't have a moon. And also there's almost no magnetic um, core. Venus's core isn't magnetic. There's no uh, magnetosphere on Venus or a very weak one anyways. So uh, those are the differences. But basically what scientists are saying in this paper is that you know, if you look at Earth just by itself, right, everyone everyone knows, obviously, Earth uh, supports life. But if you look at it by itself, they don't really know where the limits are in the life, right? They We don't know, you know what temperatures um, would kill life or what temperatures would be too hot or too cold or whatever. We don't know those things um, if we just looked at Earth by itself. So if you look at Venus, it's kind of like, you know, here's the example of what it could be, you know, or here's the example of a limit, I should say. Here's the example of the limit of what this is. So there's something called insulation flux, which is the amount of solar energy that gets to uh, each planet. So obviously Venus has much more than Earth. Let's just check out these pictures right here. I mean, I love pictures of Venus. Let's just check. These are uh, uh, lithograph features images of Venus from the Pioneer Venus Magellan Trace and Venus Express missions. Um, one of my favorite all time space pictures. You guys have probably seen it is the these the Venus lander the Russian uh, Venus lander I forget what it was called but amazing where is the big one there's a big one where it's just like this picture right here to me this is like I mean you want to talk about space but look at this this is just to imagine that you're actually on Venus and this is your view insane anyways let's talk about the two missions that um, NASA is planning um, to go to Venus so the two missions NASA has planned are called Da Vinci and Veritas. And Da Vinci stands for... Well, the first new mission is called the Da Vinci mission. And um, that stands for Deep Atmosphere Venus Investigation of Noble Gases Chemistry and Imaging. Um, and it's scheduled, I think, right now in, for 2029, uh, which is sad, but <laughs> it's coming. So I'm still excited. So the whole point of this mission... Um, as we see here, is to study the origin, evolution, and present state of Venus in an unprecedented detail from near the top of the clouds to the planet's surface. So it's going to, um, yeah, right here, two gravity assist flybys. It's going to study the cloud tops in ultraviolet light. Um, and then I believe it is going right on the planet's surface. And then it's going to paint a global picture of surface composition and the evolution of the planet's ancient highlands. Uh, very cool. I thought it was going to land. Oh, yeah, the probe. Yeah, so Da Vinci's probe. Yeah, so here we go. Um, after exploring the atmosphere, it's going to drop the probe into 2031. That's crazy how it's just it's going to go around Venus for like two years. Um, wow. Probe is not required to survive landing, but if it does, it could provide up to an additional 17 minutes of bonus science. <laughs> I love that. 17 minutes of bonus science. That would be awesome. Um, it may not seem like a lot of time by Earth standards, but given how hard it is for instruments to operate in Venus, every additional minute of science is invaluable. That is going to be really cool. That's a really cool mission. And the other mission is called the Veritas mission. So that's the Venus Emissivity Radio Science, INSAR, Topography, and Spectroscopy mission. Um, this one also is very cool. So this is the first NASA spacecraft to explore Earth's sister planet, um, Venus, since the 1990s. Very cool. Let's go down here. This is a really insane picture, but I love it. How do you not love that? <laughs> it's amazing. It's like it's like we're playing a Venus video game here. I mean, what is that? Um, so Veritas will study Venus from crust to core. Let's find out about this mission. Um, let's see what it does. It will unlock the secrets of Venus's surface and help in interior evolution by searching for evidence of past and present water, providing an inventory of current and recent volcanic and surface activity and answering critical questions about the rocky planet. So this is what it's going to do. Create the first global high resolution topography and radar images of Venus. That would be cool. I love messing around on uh, Google moon. 
you just you know uh make the first maps of regions where geological processes are actively changing in the surface of venus very cool produce the first near global map of surface rock composition make the first determination of core composition whether it should be solid or liquid or whether it is solid or liquid um that is going to be really neat so we got these cool new venus missions they're both probes obviously we're not sending humans to uh, venus yet but I am looking forward to both of these. And now to finish off uh, what we were talking about, basically the whole point of this whole thing that the scientists want to figure out is they want to study Venus to figure out what are the limitations of life, at least that we know kind of um, what Earth is, what Venus is, how similar they are, but how also different they are. And also they want to study Venus to find out, you know, what maybe what effects, obviously the ones we know, cause the, the runaway greenhouse gas and kind of the whole... Uh, the, the death of the planet. Um, and then maybe we can take all that info and then, you know, put that back onto Earth and figure out if, I don't know, if runaway volcanic activity or whatever is going to start uh, going crazy. But I don't know. What do you guys think? I just think it's cool that we have two new missions. Uh, it's too bad we got to wait a while, but, um, you know, I love following new missions. The funny thing is with, uh, you know, when you're playing, playing like Kerbal Space Program, you just hit fast forward the timeline, right? And you're, one year goes by, two years go by, three years go by. Uh, so you don't really care about the, you know, you're going to uh, Jewel, which is like Jupiter. You don't really care about how long it takes. But then when you realize these probes go, yeah, and then they're doing these gravity assists that are taking like one year kind of each time. Um, pretty wild stuff. It's pretty wild stuff. Space is so gigantically far. And uh, every time, you know, real life exploration happens in space it's always a reminder of just how truly insane our universe is anyways guys what do you think about this mission what do you think about venus in general and do you think that we're headed on that path i think we'll end up like venus i really hope not uh i don't think we will i think we're too smart for that as a species so have a great day guys um and enjoy yourself out there